what's up everybody welcome back to exotic astrology again and if you are new to the channel and you have not subscribed yet then please subscribe to it immediately <laughs> so that you keep getting updates on the bhagavad gita and astrology and different other aspects of life every morning <laughs> or maybe every night or maybe every day or every evening every afternoon depending on where you stay because i upload every day one video at least sometimes i upload two also all right and if you like this video then click the thumbs up at the end of course there you go before i start god is there with you all the time just look to him and he will be there so what is today's topic today's topic is very fundamental for this day and age in kali yuga especially this current 21st century which is dawning upon us today's topic is the famous midlife crisis oh my god <laughs> there's so much crisis these days so what is midlife crisis basically midlife crisis basically as terminology as per definition it simply means between the ages of 30 to 35 or within 33 to 38 that is the time where people start thinking where did we go did i go right did i go wrong or should i should i have come here at all suppose you are working in a software company as a it engineer so then uh, they the sometimes you may think at the age of 35 should i should i have been an it engineer or should i not or should have i been a doctor or should have i been a astronaut or maybe an astrologer <laughs> should have i been a mechanical engineer or a computer engineer all right so these are the things sometimes haunt us so what happens basically is in the race of time as you say the rat race people choose their life paths their careers their domains mba ms mbbs then so many other things people choose but then after some time they come to know that they are not feeling uh, happy in that they are not feeling content inside and they are not feeling like doing it anymore so then what happens to continue doing that in spite of the dislikes becomes next to impossible that is the time when people start thinking that what should i do with my life because that is the time when at least you have the time to do something in the range of 35 i'm not saying here that people at 55 cannot do anything i'm not saying that i am saying that at least if you have uh, some goals some plans in your head then by 35 you can execute it at least or you can try your best to fit that goal with your current existing schedule if that is possible better do it <laughs> for example if you have hobbies like singing dancing then try your best and what happens is we have the powerful tool of astrology in this parashara has given us beautiful rules techniques by ways by which we uh, can identify what a person will be very happy doing or what the person uh, will require to do in his workplace or how can he improve the situation in his workplace all these things are uh, very beautifully described in the scriptures in the brihat parashara hora shastra i mean there is no direct dictum about what i am saying but overall when you know the astrological chart we can see how should we go ahead with our life path destiny etc so how do we do that well first of all the entire horoscope has to be seen <laughs> without that i cannot say what will happen because every person is an individual every person has their likes and dislikes their particular planetary placements so depending on that we have to see what is happening but i will just give some broad guidelines here first of all check where is your sun and moon placed because those are the areas where you find at home <laughs> at peace 
So for example, if sun is in the sign of Gemini, means you are born between 15 June to 15 July, roughly. That means you are a very talkative person. You like to talk, you like to chat, you like to start new things, you like to do things together. You like to kick off things and you may or may not continue that, but you like to kick off things, new things. You like to see both the sides of a coin because these are the traits of Gemini. All right. And suppose your moon is placed in the sign of Sagittarius. Then your mind is naturally very content in the holy words of the scriptures. All right. So suppose you have your moon in the sign of Sagittarius and your sun is in the sign of Gemini. Suppose I am giving an example. Well, then you can preach spiritual knowledge because the moon is giving you the divine knowledge, which is Sagittarius and the sun is giving you a satisfaction of uh, ego. Ego, I don't mean arrogance here, but you identify very well with wherever sun is placed, with that house and with that zodiac sign. So, moon is giving you the knowledge of Sagittarius and then sun will give you the power to spread the knowledge because Gemini is the original third house of the zodiac. Yes. So, therefore, people, just an example, people with moon in Sagittarius and sun in the sign of Gemini can become very great preachers of religion, of spirituality, of astrology also. That comes very naturally to them. Apart from that, you check which planets uh, sun and moon are conjoined with. For example, if sun is conjoined Ketu, then your nature is by default very spiritual. You are always thinking of the outer worlds, of the other world as you say. <laughs> and if moon is also conjunct the lord of the eighth house or the lord of the ninth house that is considered fabulous then also the person can gravitate towards spiritual topics then if suppose sun and moon is sitting with the lord of the sixth house then you can focus on issues related to health vitality improving the uh, digestion system you can be a great doctor by this then if sun and moon are associated with the 8th house and planets like Mars and Saturn come, especially Mars, then this may not denote spirituality, it may denote surgery because 8th house is also the house of surgery. And planets tend to bring uh, the nature of their tattvas. So for example, 8th house is also occult knowledge but also it is surgery. So depending on the ruler of the 8th house, you will come to know what is happening. <laughs> You just cannot say, okay, moon is with the 8th lord, so I want to become an astrologer or I want to become a surgeon. No, you have to see who is the 8th lord. So many other things are there. Then, apart from the sun and moon, you must see which planet is situated in the lagna itself because that is very important because that is like lagna is the head. So it is like that planet has come and it is sitting over your head, which simply means that the aspects or the rulerships of that planet cannot be avoided at any cost there is some karma which you have to fulfill i'm not saying that free will doesn't act but majority part of your life will be surrounded around that planet which is in the lagna so for example if venus is sitting in the first house then what happens the person is very easily uh, moved by luxuries beauty women opposite sex all these things so that is like a defining aspect of his life even is the same uh, for women also. These women will love to dress very much. They will be like fanatic about <laughs> dressing. They will be too much picky about clothes and all these things. They will be too much concerned about how they are looking. And the, the these are the ways how you figure out. Now, what if you are a Libra ascendant and you have Venus in the first house? So now Venus here is not only Venus. It is ruler of the ascendant and the eighth house also so then what then it is like the lagna lord is sitting in your in the own house ascendant lord is in the first house which means it is in its own house and also venus is the eighth lord eighth lord of transformation surgery so then eighth lord is also sitting in the lagna that means whenever you go uh, re nearby things related to venus which is love romance sexuality beauty all these things then there will be major transformation in your life because the 8th house is involved and that transformation will be very strong because here the lagna is also getting involved. Your whole life will change by that transformation. 
drastic, massive, huge change. After marriage, I have seen liberal ascendants with Venus in the first house. Or even if they get into a new relationship, even then, their whole life changes. Something good or bad that is depending on so many other factors. Then also we have to check the situation of the fifth house. Fifth house will tell us what kind of things that we like. What kind of things that attracts us. Yes. So for example, if there is Jupiter or Mercury place, then the person may be... Uh, very much interested towards uh, uh, knowledge and spirituality and all these things. If Venus is placed, the person may be too much uh, into women and all these Ven Venusian stuff. So there you see, these, these are the ways by which you figure out what, what am I good at, what should I do, where is the Lagna Lord going, that is another, play, another very important placement. For earlier I said, which is the planet sitting in your lagna if, if there is one planet if there are more than one planet see all of them and if there is no planet in the lagna check where the lord of the ascendant is going so that will tell you where the focus of the person is going so you check sun you check moon you check the lagna you check the lagna lord you also see which sign is the lagna suppose the lagna is in taurus all right so then uh, Taurus related things which is luxury, beauty etc will be very prominent in his life if it's a Libra ascendant then relationships will be very prominent working in teams, working with other people collaborating, these things will be very prominent trying to balance out things because Libra is the exaltation sign of Saturn, now what if it is a um, Aries ascendant, then Mars will be very prominent, wherever Mars is sitting a major focus of the person's life will go towards that. The placement of the Lagna Lord indicates what the person naturally intends to do. Should I repeat? The placement of the Lagna Lord indicates what the native or where his intelligence is naturally likely to go. So, For example, if the Lagna Lord goes to the 10th house, then the person is naturally gravitated towards working 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 towards status name fame the person is very much obsessed with all these things because the head is going there lagna is the head and wherever the head goes the person goes <laughs> that is why lagna is also the head but it is also the whole life because ultimately you will do things with the head itself you will not do things with your leg <laughs> you will do things with your head so physically lagna represents the head till the forehead and that is where the brain is situated and apart from that, it also represents your whole life as a house. So that is why Lagna is very important. The ascendant is very, very, very important. And then you have the placement of the Lagnesh also. So for example, if Lagnesh goes to the ninth house, Lagna Lord, suppose you are a, a Scorpio ascendant. Okay. So who is the ruler of Scorpio? Scorpio is ruled by the planet, one planet or two planets. Scorpio has two rulers. One is Ketu, the other one is Venus, right? No, <laughs> Moon, no, my God, Scorpio, Mars, correct. So, we have to see where is Mars, where is Ketu, all these things we have to see. And now suppose Mars is uh, situated in a particular sign for a Scorpio ascendant and Ketu is situated in another place. So then how will you know which is more strong? Strong doesn't mean good or bad, it simply means that which Lagna Lord among the two, because there are two Lagna Lords here, the planet Ketu and the planet Mars. So which one of them will be more prominent? All right. So for example, if Ketu has gone to a fire sign or to a water sign and Mars has gone to a water sign because Mars is very weak in water signs because it gets debilitated in Cancer. So then what happens? Ketu becomes very strong. So suppose Ketu for a Scorpio ascendant is sitting in the sign of Taurus. And suppose Mars is in the trines, in the 5th house or in the ninth house. Then what happens is, these people, instead of focusing on the trines, they are likely to focus more on the 7th house. Do you understand? Because here Ketu's power is more than the power of Mars. On the other hand, if Ketu is in an air sign or an earth sign and Mars is in a fire sign, then this will be the opposite. Wherever Mars is sitting, you will have more willpower towards that. So this is how you know how to not go through a midlife crisis. 
okay and sometimes there are it happens that there are too many planets in one house in one zodiac sign so for example if there are too many planets in the sign of uh, sagittarius then a person can become a preacher of spirituality that will be very great e even if suppose there are four planets and sun and moon are not there but at least lot of the ascendant will be there because four planets means eight ascendants are covered and sun moon is not there means even if they are not lagna lot then 10 are covered so only two more ascendants are remaining which is very unlikely that one among the four will not be the ascendant lot so that sign that house wherever that is falling the sign of sagittarius with four planets that becomes very powerful if there are six planets in the sign of virgo then you can focus on being a critical person Critic critics is very good for you you can go on managing things manipulating things those things will give you a lot of uh, fulfillment a lot of joy happiness comfort managing others problems because virgo is the original sixth house is the sign of problems discomfort unhappiness so deal with people who are undergoing all these things then you will uh, have much more happiness in life do you understand <laughs> so when we use the different techniques so i gave four techniques not four many let's count placement of the sun placement of the moon planets in the lagna the sign in the lagna the lagna lord's placement and the sixth one is if there are many planets conjunct in a particular sign in a particular horoscope okay so these are the six ways and of course there are so many other things that we need to see we, we dep depending on the strength of the planet yes so all those things we have to see and when we uh, go for a consultation we must ask the that what is my life path what do you think which are the areas i can go oh yeah and another the seventh is check the planets in the trines because they are your dna i had made a video dna so the seventh criteria the seventh indication is which planets are situ situated in your trines okay so by that you will come to know what you are very good at so by this I, and i'm not talking of 10th house here people only take the 10th house as karma carrier see all these problems which come up is because people will simply ask astrologers okay what is my career do not ask what is your career go and ask what is my life path then you try to see how much that is matching with the 10th house let me give you an example suppose there are four planets conjunct in the sign of sagittarius suppose but somehow none of the four is your 10th lord neither the sign sagittarius is in your 10th house okay and suppose the lagna lord is also in a different place so then what will happen is because the lagnish is somewhere the person will be gravitating towards something else wherever the lagnish is placed and he will also be doing something separate in his career because the 10th house is not associated with these four planets but because there are four planets in sagittarius whenever the time period which is dasha in astrology that gets activated the person will always run into spirituality or whichever house sagittarius is so that even though the lagnish and the 10th house 10th lord is not associated somehow that becomes a part of his life if there are four or five planets in one sign so ask the astrologer that can you please explain me how the flow of the chart is happening so these are seven ways by which you can understand what is your life path what you are born to do and that is why i did not include the 10th house here i did not say okay 10th lord sitting there but karma is later first you have to know who you are dharma <laughs> If you don't know dharma how can you do karma and i'm not saying of the ninth house your dharma basically means that which upholds you that which withhelds you that is dharan dharayati dharma as in hindi you say bhagwan sabko apne fun mein dharan karke rakhe hai bhagwan vishnu that lord vishnu is sustaining the entire universe on the hoods of anant shesh sheshnag so that is sustenance so once you know what is your dharma okay and by that you can uh, know what you should be doing in life and doing i don't mean career what at all you are born to do so by these seven techniques you can figure out and then there are so many other things nakshatras and 
there's a whole lot of things to astrology which i will be discussing very soon only request from my side is please be patient everything will be discussed here all right that is it from my side once again thank you very much for seeing this video till the end <laughs> i hope you have watched <laughs> and also thank you very much for subscribing to the channel and if you have not subscribed then please subscribe to it so that you keep getting daily updates on spiritual topics including astrology and before ending as i say god is there with you all the time just look to him and he will be there all right if you have any questions queries or comments then let me know oh and yeah if you want to know your life path or your destiny so 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 and forth then please contact me in my website vedic renaissance which i have made recently is there in the description and by that you can follow the procedure whatever i mentioned all right until next time hope you find your destiny goodbye see you